So we're in the kitchen and we're cooking. And this is, especially for Barry and a few other people who've asked, but especially for Barry, because Barry wanted a video of carrot soup. Carrot soup. So Barry's going to get a video of carrot soup. <laughs> so here we are in the kitchen and Paul's going to make, I'm going to film. And um, Paul, you've um, got all the ingredients ready to go. Uh -huh. Shall we have a look at the ingredients? Here we are. Paul, talk us through the ingredients. As you may have seen in an earlier video, which is uh, why we're doing this today, these were carrots, Chandre carrots that we got in Morrison's earlier this week that were down from 90p to 5p. So um, we made carrot soup earlier in the week with that. And because, as Richard said, we've had requests, we're going to make this now. So this is about 800 grams of carrots. If it's a little bit more, a little bit less, it doesn't matter. We've got a large onion, or well, these are two smaller onions here. We've got four cloves of garlic. Um, this is a heaped teaspoon of coriander. That's more than a teaspoon. That's a heaped teaspoon, a big heaped teaspoon of coriander. That's two, that's two teaspoons easily. It's two slightly rounded teaspoons or one big heaped oh, teaspoon. No, it's more than that, most definitely. I'm sorry, but it is. Then we're going to be using bouillon, vegetable bouillon. We're going to use a tablespoon of olive oil and we're going to use black pepper. So the bouillon is a powder which is made by a company called Marigold and it's Swiss vegetable bouillon powder and that is the element of, of flavour and salt that we add. We don't add any extra salt because this has actually got sea salt in it. In it. So um, what else has it got in it? It's got sea salt, vegetable protein, potato starch, vegetables, parsnip, onions, leeks, carrots, parsley, celery seed, turmeric, white pepper, garlic, mace, lovage, nutmeg. And you're obviously going to be using water, Paul. So yep. you've boiled the kettle. I've boiled the kettle and we're going to use, to start with, we're going to use a litre and a half of boiled water. And then... Um, you're going to you add can, the bouillon to the boiled water? We're going to add the bouillon to the boiled water okay. and then we'll thin it down if we want to thin the soup down later on. Okay, so what's the first step in making the soup? First thing is to put a tablespoon of olive oil or about a tablespoon of olive oil into a saucepan. About a tablespoon. If you want to use less, do. Um, and then we're going to warm that up. You don't want it on too high a heat. There is actually a bit of water in here so some steam may come off here. That's why it's crackling, That's because you've got a bit of water in, water in there. Never really mix hot oil and water, folks. Particularly in quantities. And then we're going to um, turn this down and put the onions and the garlic in. And then we're just going to let that soften through for about five minutes. Yeah, it generally takes about five minutes to soften onions, doesn't it? And you don't want it on too high a heat, especially with garlic, because the garlic will burn and you don't want the garlic to burn. And actually, if you don't chunk your garlic like we have done and you decide to use a masher for your garlic, then you should add the garlic a bit later. after we have um, softened down the carrots as well. Yeah, so that's going to take about five minutes. So. We'll come back to that when it's softened. So it's been about five minutes, Paul, and yeah. um, they've actually started to colour a little bit, haven't they? Yeah, coloured think... a little bit. This front ring is slightly fierce. Yeah, it's quite a the fierce ring. ring, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but that's fine. Uh, they haven't browned. And it's at all. you know if they, well, they have browned a little bit. Sorry, they haven't. They haven't gone like they haven't crispy brown. Burned, but I mean, a little bit of colour on your uh, onions is okay, but. Your garlic can get a little bitter, but yeah. hey ho, c'est la vie. In goes the um, ground coriander. So coriander. Oh, a bit went at the back there. 
and then we're just gonna let those or that spice not those spices that spice heat through a little bit yeah and you, you should always cook your spice for approximately two minutes um, when you're doing a curry or you're doing anything spicy about two minutes is the normal accepted um, time I mean Paul's using a rubber spatula here silicon yeah silicon um, it's not ideal if you're frying spices really a, a metal spoon would probably be better to get anything that's sticking on the bottom of the pan so, Richard doesn't like these spatulas, I adore them. I think they're fine for certain things, but not for frying spices, because I can see that it's sticking to the bottom there, Paul. Well, that's fine. Well, it is, because the liquid will then pick it up. But... Yeah. So I'm actually going to add the black pepper now. Because pepper is a spice. Good put... few, a good few... Yeah. I think this is the thing when you look at chefs they they work on such a average um audience taste bud that that you get or put a teaspoon in do you want to show um, the viewers what's going on in the pan yeah so there you go you've got your coriander and your onion and your black pepper just frying off there i think that's about it isn't yeah. it for that and now we're going to add the carrots so all the carrots are going in Carefully. Lovely colour. I mean, they were such a bargain, those carrots. Oh, it's ridiculous. I just can't believe they. I, I don't know how Morrison's do that. Well, it's all supermarkets. I it's know, not just but Morrison's. 5p? Really? But it's better that they sell them. Well, yeah, I know. Than it goes to, to landfill. Yeah. I think in Amer in France, don't they, you're not allowed to, supermarkets aren't allowed to send anything away. Well, good. As usual, Britain lags behind. What I'm going to do um, is let this soften down, but I'm just adding a couple of tablespoons of water now, hot water and then we're going to put the lid on and that'll let it steam and also and also it will stop anything sticking to the bottom of the pan okay and you just how long are you going to leave those for just then? going to leave it for another five minutes and then we'll add the rest and, of the liquid okay and why do you do that I don't know, it's what mum taught me. Mum always used to do that, and that's what I've always done. Okay. I think it helps. Um, one of the problems, I think particularly with onions, is that if you don't cook them out, they do have a raw taste, even when they're fully cooked in a soup. But anyway, we're gonna leave that for five minutes on a low heat, let it simmer, and then we'll be back. Okay. Okay, so it's been about five minutes or so. Yeah. You can see the carrots are steaming away there. And they've slightly, they've gone slightly paler. Yeah. Um, all that onion is soft. There's a little bit of give in the carrots now. So I've made up the stock. So I've added the bouillon powder to a litre. How much bouillon powder? A tablespoon of bouillon powder to a litre and a half of water I've put in. So that's probably slightly more than they recommend isn't it um, because they recommend a teaspoon to a pint don't they or half a pint no it's four teaspoons to a litre they recommend is it so yeah. it's probably slightly more and this is the 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 only salt that we'll be putting in at the moment and then we'll taste it later and see if we need to add any more salt and, and pepper you know obviously when you serve something if somebody's tastes require a little bit more salt, then, you know, you add more salt when you, when you eat. So you're bringing this up to the boil, Paul. Yeah. When we had this the other day, you wanted a little bit more salt. I, I did didn't. want a little bit yeah. more salt, yeah. Um, but I didn't. So it's better to undersalt something than oversalt something. Yeah, because you can't take the salt away, people. However, if you do oversalt something, if you put in a peeled potato... 
the potato will actually take up some of the salt and then you can discard the potato afterwards. Yeah, but, but that's but don't over salt. That's yeah. the, the best thing. I always learnt in cookery when I did my O level that, you know, you can't remove salt. Full stop. So never make that mistake. And when I didn't do my cookery lessons oh, I learned no. at apron level of my mum's apron that you shouldn't over salt. Yeah. So this is now coming up to the boil. Um, we're going to turn it down to a simmer and just let it simmer for 15 minutes now. Okay, great. And by the way, that's simmering it with the lid on. So it's been approximately 15 minutes and as you can see, it's all boiling away. And you just check to see... and see. You check to see that they're cooked. Yeah, and you can well see cooked. that you can cut, cut right through it. So the next stage is to actually liquidise this. Now, if you've not got a liquidizer, um, you can use a... Hand blitzer. Hand blender. Um, and if you haven't got a hand blender, then you could use... Um, a potato a masher. A potato masher, yeah. And that will obviously give you a more chunky soup. A, yeah, a chunkier soup. And we do occasionally do that because we just ring the changes sometimes, don't we? Well, yeah, we know. We like to do things differently occasionally, but this time we're going to blend it. So Paul is going to show you what he does with the blender. So we he, have... he carries the blender glass over and we've got a slotted spoon. And what I like to do is take out all of the, the veg or as much of the veg as I can first not all of it doesn't need to all your onions and stuff doesn't need to but what I find is that I like making sure that all of the the bigger chunks of whatever vegetable sorry about the banging whatever vegetable soup we're making um, gets blitzed first and now what I'm going to do is add some of this liquid to the top of the vegetables here and then after we've blitzed I'll then blitz the the rest of the liquid on its own and put this into a bowl Okay, so Paul's now going to put the liquid in. So not all of the liquid, but I'm going to put liquid up to the level of the, the vegetables in. So we've moved over to the blender, so um, Paul's going to blend this. Make sure that if you do have a top like this, it's slightly loose so that the air, hot air can get out. We've got a soup setting on ours, so we just turn it to soup. Actually, it's not even plugged in. Right, it would help, yeah. Yeah, so we got a soup setting on ours, so we just press auto, and it, for us it does it. Okay. Right, so I'm now going to decant this into a bowl and blitz the rest of the liquid in here. So the reason that Paul's doing this is because all the liquid won't fit in. So... And what you don't want is you don't want to overfill the liquidizer because it could just blow the top off the liquidizer. That's the remainder of the liquid going into the liquidizer. And back on. Just to finish that final little bit. Right. Okay, so I'm going to put this back into the bowl, uh, sorry, back into the saucepan and then I'm going to empty this into the saucepan as well. Okay, so it all, all goes back into the saucepan. Sorry about that focus issue. 
No, I can't do it the other way either. And the remaining liquid. And then we stir that in. And that's your carrot and carrot spicy and coriander. coriander soup. Made. And now you can determine what thickness you want, whether you want it thick like that or whether you like it thinner. Well, I think that thickness is absolutely fine. If you were going to water it down, be careful you don't water it down too, too much, much and you'll lose the flavour. So there we go. Carrot and spicy coriander soup homemade. Especially for Barry. <laughs> okay, thanks for watching, guys. And we'll see you again very soon for more cookery adventures. Bye for now.